What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross, I like games, and today we need to chat some Battle Spirit Saga. Now, if you've been following this channel for any length of time, you will know that I am in on Battle Spirit Saga. I went to the launch event in London, it was amazing, had a great time. I've been covering the game since it was revealed. I've, I've, I've just been loving it, honestly, ladies and gentlemen. I have been absolutely loving it. And we've got some pretty big news. No, Avril Lavigne has not tweeted out about the game again. Boo, hiss, etc. What we do have, however, is some news about the second set. Some other news as well. But first of all, we need to have a chat because the second set is coming. It's gone and been updated on the website with the information we need about Booster Set 2 False Gods. Now, the information we have officially at the moment is that it is launching on July the 28th, 2023. I do want to bring your attention, though, to the phrasing there, which specifically says full release. Now, maybe that means nothing, but come on, we've been doing card games for long enough at this stage. We know that that basically means there's going to be some kind of pre-release launch event, etc. There weren't pre-releases for the first set, Dawn of History... However, there were release events. Hopefully, there's going to be a similar kind of thing going on here. And that makes me very, very happy indeed. The MSRP is going to stay $4.99 per pack. Which, yes, it is on the higher side, admittedly. No, you know, counter-argument there. But it is worth noting that a lot of card games are going up to $4.55 a pack anyway. So, it seems... That essentially what Battle Spirits have done is just started at $5 and then all the other games are going to kind of come up to them and they're just going to kind of be sitting there. Don't know, incidentally. I have no insider information, but that does seem like a pretty, um, a pretty sensible prediction. So we've also then got information about types of cards. How does it stack up in terms of, you know, compared to the first set? Yeah, pretty similar. Each box contains 24 booster packs. Snap. One booster pack contains 12 cards and one core card. Snap. Now, 278 cards, however. There's still 68 common, just like Dawn of History. 32 uncommon, just like Dawn of History. And 24 rare, just like Dawn of History. All of which can come as normal or reverse holo. There are still 12 X rares, just like Dawn of History. And there is one Saga rare, the, you know, super crazy rare card, the rarest card in the set, just like Dawn of History. So how come there are 278 cards rather than 272? Because there are six collaboration rares. And if you've been following my Battle Spirit Saga videos on this channel, and let's face it, you should have been following my Battle Spirit videos on this channel, you'll know what these are. Because I have already told you, and we've now finally got a decent look at the video that isn't literally recorded on somebody's phone at a convention center. We now know that those special collaboration cards are Gundam. So it's basically, in terms of how the set breaks down, exactly the same as the first set in terms of rarity and all of that. Except there's six Gundam collaboration cards that you can get. Oh, yeah, and that there are box toppers as well. There are... Well, there, there's an there's a exclusive box topper. There's an exclusive Gundam box topper. I mean, come on, ladies and gentlemen. That sounds amazing. That sounds awesome. I am loving it. This is awesome. Life is good. Now, in terms of release dates, it is interesting to kind of have a look at what they've done. As it stands, we had a full release... On April the 28th for Dawn of History. And then July the 28th for False Gods. That is exactly three months. May, June, July, exactly three months. Now, there is a question here of, is this going to carry on? I think so. Less than three months between sets for, for Western TCGs, where we got big sets. No, that doesn't generally happen. Sometimes we do see the first set having a bit of a bigger gap between sets one and two. Clearly not happening here. Most TCGs in the West, three months is standard. Three months between sets is what we expect. That's what I'm imagining is going to be the case here. I don't know. However, that does seem to be a, um, 
it seems to be a pretty safe guess. So three months from July, expect set free to be dropping August, September, October. Expect an October release, a late October release, which of course makes sense. You have to drop your new set in November, basically, or very late October in order to grab the Christmas shopping. So yeah, this makes sense. This is what we would expect. Jobs are good un. So we know quite a bit. We've got the name, False Gods. Of course, without knowing very much about Battle Spirit Saga, that doesn't tell us too much. We know the booster pack, like box design, but again, without knowing too much about Battle Spirit, it's early and the lore is itself. We don't know too much. But we got price, we got release date, we got rarity breakdown. This is pretty cool. And we know Gundam's coming. You know what else we know? Starter Deck 5, Verdant Wings. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. As well as a new set, they went and cheekily dropped a new starter deck as well. And they did even say, like, on Twitter, they literally said, our website has been updated with new information for the next set. They didn't even mention that they've gone and put the new starter deck out. That's a bit cheeky, ladies and gentlemen. But don't worry, that's why I'm here. They might not tell you, I told you. Although, to be fair, it was literally on the website. Now, this is also coming out on July the 28th. So, like so many Bandai card games, it looks like what they're going to be doing is dropping starter decks at the same time as sets. Now, it is interesting that they're only giving us one because, of course, they gave us four in the first set. Maybe there's going to be more. Maybe they're going to be added on later. For the moment, it's one. It's Verdant Wings. And it's green. Now, the rumours have been abound that this is going to be the set that introduces green into Battle Spirits. That is essentially now confirmed because we officially know the next starter deck is going to be the green starter deck. So, obviously, this is going to be the set that introduces green. And they do this with Bandai games all the time. So, for instance, the second One Piece set was Paramount War. Paramount War was the set that introduced Black into the One Piece TCG. And would you believe it, on the same day as Paramount War dropped, they also dropped Starter Deck 6, which just so happened to be the Black Starter Deck. Not a coincidence, incidentally, ladies and gentlemen. Not a coincidence at all. So that they do this. That's a very standard thing that Bandai tend to do. So this makes perfect sense. Introduce green in the second set and have a starter deck at the same time. Incidentally, this is why I'm tending to think they're not going to be introducing any more starter decks. Because essentially, the first four colours got a starter deck with set one. Green doesn't have a starter deck. So they're the only one that gets a starter deck with set two. Uh, usual thing, $15, 50 cards, play sheet, 30 cores and a soul core. Basically the same as before, ready to play deck out of the box. One thing that is very much worth noting, the first four starter decks had very, very good exclusive cards in. The first four starter decks, every card was exclusive. And they all had really, really good cards in. Like, really good cards. Like, the top decks had cards from the starter decks in. So, although we don't know the set list or anything like that, come on, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's fair to assume they're going to be good. But there's one more thing I want to share with you, and that is store championship winners promos. And this actually kind of carries on quite nicely, because the winner's promos are the X-Rares from the starter decks. Yay! Including my boy, Calamity Beast Chaos Pegasaurus. I love this card. Basically, store championships are happening June to July and August to September. And these winner card sets are being given out at store championships. And yes, you do get the set of four. For winning, that's very, very important. And I'm not even joking when I say these cards make me want to go along and try and actually win one of these with my stupid yellow rush deck. Which probably isn't good enough to win a store championships, but I might get lucky. So we've got Calamity Beast Chaos Pegasaurus. That is the yellow one. That is my favorite. Six cost can be reduced by three. But as a level two or three, all your spirits that cost two gain 2,000 power. And as a level three, when you attack, you select two of your spirits that cost two and refresh them. Of course, very important to note that there are many good two-cost spirits in yellow, so you can make decks built around that. 
Divine Moon Sky Beast Fan Attack Elk is your white card here. Seven costs can be reduced by three. At any level, when this spirit blocks, during this turn, this spirit cannot be destroyed by your opponent's destruction effects or as a result of battle. And it cannot have its cause removed by your opponent's effects. Both very cool. And level two and three, if you did not lose a life this turn, place one core from your opponent's life into their trash. And we've all seen what white decks do at this stage. And if you haven't, let me tell you, white decks frustrate you. They stop you playing the game. And then they use Fanatec Elk to remove your cores without even having to attack. So then you can't block or any of that rubbish. This is a phenomenal card. Dark King Snake Pendocles as a seven cost can be reduced by three. At any level, when summoned, you select one of your opponent's spirits, remove all but one core and place it in the reserve. And when you attack, you select one of your opponent's spirits, remove a core and place it in the trash. So every time you attack, you can essentially take away one of their cores. And a lot of the time, your opponent's going to have one spirit with one core on. So you can essentially just destroy them. But also, use a summoning to get rid of all but one, and then attack to remove that one. So essentially, yeah, you can really go after your opponent's spirits here. And Nebula Dragon Andromeda is a six cost, can be reduced by three. At any level, when summoned, select one of your opponent's spirits with 3,000 or less BP, or one of their nexuses, and destroy it. Sorry, fewer. And as a level three, it's got Confront, which means your opponent must block if able, but you've got 10,000 power, and that's going to hurt. These are amazing. I love them. I'm a fan, but now it's over to you guys. Tell me what you think about the second set. Tell me what you think about the store championship promos. Tell me anything you want to tell me in the comment section. Good nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about a bunch of card games, including Battle Spirits. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays. <laughs>